What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're checking out a SketchUp extension designed to help automate the document creation process from SketchUp. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. Okay, so you might remember that I've covered a couple other extensions from this developer earlier. Um, so like the 5D auto measure, uh, the 5D auto tag. I think I might have talked about the 5D plus library as well. So these are all different tools for doing different things in SketchUp from a developer that's somewhat newer on the scene. Um, but he's got some really interesting stuff that he's kind of put out there. So his auto tagging, um, other things like that. So we've talked about some of his extensions before. Those are all free. This is going to be his paid extension. It's called 5D Plus. And so when you first go to the front page, it's kind of like buried a little bit down here um, over here on the right hand side. But it's a really interesting tool that's kind of um, stepping in to try to automate some of the stuff having to do with plan creation. There's some pretty interesting stuff in here. This is probably going to turn into a multiple video series as I kind of get into it. But I'm going to do my best to give you kind of an overview of what it does. So 5D Plus is basically a tool for automating um, the creation of construction drawings from 3D models. So note how there's an option over here for either a subscription or a permanent price or a permanent license as well on this page. There is a 30-day free trial if you do want to give it a try and just uh, see how it works. So I have been kind of following the forum thread that the developer has created over here. I will say he is like ultra responsive to people's questions, um, and he keeps adding new features to this tool in a very cool way. So he is definitely supporting this tool for sure, um, and he's adding really interesting things based on user feedback and other things like that. So I'm going to go ahead and link to that in the notes down below. Another thing that I like about this is he actually has a documentation file, um, which I can also link to in the notes down below, but he has like a user um, documentation file that kind of like tells you what everything does, which, uh, you know, with some, with some, uh, with some extensions that could be really hard to find. So it's nice to have something that you can kind of read and actually see like what everything is supposed to do. I'm going to talk you through in general, how you can start using this to create different things. And then um, there will probably be some follow ups a little bit later on. Okay. And so when you install this extension, you're going to get a toolbar that looks like this. And it's basically you can have two options in here. There's going to be a selector dialog, which you're not going to worry too much about for right now. And there's going to be this overall dialog, which is where you're going to spend a lot of your time in here. Now, the way this is laid out, um, it's it can be a little bit confusing, but once you kind of get familiar with what the different things do, it's not too bad. So what this does is this basically gives you the ability to start creating different plans um, from your SketchUp models. And that's really what I'm going to focus on in this first video. And then we can get a little bit more in depth. So he's got tools in here for creating like column grids and level grids and other things like that. But um, just kind of high level, just diving into it so you can first get started. Um, so notice how there's an option over here for auto create scenes. And so if you use the option for auto create scenes, notice how you can create different scenes in here based on a selection. Or you can also just do a one click and um, basically add all of the scenes at once. So um, for now, I'm just going to hit some of the highlights right here. So say that we wanted a modeling view and a 3D view. Notice how when you click on this, what it's going to ask for is a prefix name and a suffix name. So say that you wanted to add something before or after the word modeling. Um, you could do that using this tool. You can basically change this. This is just naming your scene, right? If I click on OK, notice how that creates a 3D modeling view scene right here. And it's kind of interesting because the style that this picks is the color by tag. So you've got a modeling view in here, and you can adjust this just using your uh, styles inside of SketchUp if you want to do that. Um, so you can definitely make that adjustment as well, but this is going to automatically create that scene. So it'll do the same thing if you click on top view. It's going to give you a straight up and down top view. You know, so those are pretty simple scenes right here, but it's also going to give you the ability to create all of your elevations, for example. Oh, and by the way, one thing I didn't say is if you do want to download this sample file, you can click the little gear right here and download the sample or access the user manual in here just like this. So um, it, this is really helpful for practicing kind of your setup. So this is the AVV model architecture. Um, there's two options in there. There's also a single story building. Okay, and so say that you wanted to create all of these these elevations, you can check this box right here. Make sure you don't have anything checked down below. But if you click on the one click 
right here, it's going to automatically create those front, back, left, and right scenes in here. So um, then once you do that, it gets a lot more interesting down below. Oh, one thing to note, don't rerun this because it'll create extra copies of the scenes right here and you'll have to delete them out. So I've done that a couple times where I accidentally clicked on that and it'll create additional copies of those scenes. Not a huge deal, but just kind of pay attention to what you're doing right here. Now there's also options to add like cross sections as well as your architectural and structural plans like this. So if I click on architecture plan, for example, notice how this is currently going to just give me a cut through my first floor right here. So it creates an architectural plan view right here with a cut through my first floor. Now this is something you need to pay attention to because when you first open this up, notice how there's only a floor one in here. Well, what you need to do is you actually need to go through and you need to define what the different floors are. So what those levels are. And so in order to do that, we could go into our modeling view and actually it might be helpful for us to create a cross section view. So why don't we go ahead and create all of these cross sections right here? Because what that's going to do is that's going to give us views with a section cut that we can then use to figure out how tall our different levels are. So that's actually extremely helpful right here. And so note that when we do this, this is a one, two, three, four, and probably five story building right here. So what you can do is you can click in here to this option right here for building information. Well, notice how you can set stories and you can set these um, either being above ground or underground. So in this situation, for example, your basement floor is probably actually going to be um, lower down here. Now note that this is going to show whatever units you have set in your model info units. So right now this example model is in metric, but you could switch it to imperial as well if you wanted to in order to get imperial unit. You just get a window model info units and you can just change the units to whatever you want. I want to find my model axes right here. So your model axes should be basically your ground level. So for example, this is going to be 1650 deep right here. So what I want to do is I want to add a below ground level and I want that height to be 1650 right here. Now notice that there's an option in here for the cut height because when you work with viewports in order to create plans and sketch up and layout, you want to take a cut kind of through the middle of this. You don't want to take a cut through the bottom because you want to see the geometry of the doors and windows so that you can get those frames in there. So they kind of look like AutoCAD ish. So in this case, we could tell this, okay, we want the cut height to actually be 640 right here. So if I type in 640, click on save, one thing you might note is now in here, your basement and your floor one both show up as options, as does all levels. So if we go to B1 right here and click on this option right here for create scenes, we're going to scroll down and we're just going to click on the option for architectural plan. And we're just going to click on OK. And what that does is that's going to add a section cut at that level and this is going to set you up showing all of the architectural parts and pieces of this view so it creates the section cut automatically and it also creates the view automatically and so ideally what we would want to do right is we would want to set this up for all of the different scenes um, so in this situation what i'm going to do is i'm going to add my level two three and four and we're just going to do the same thing right so we're going to click on this button right here no we're going to click on this button right here and we want to go ahead and we want to add these heights so this object or this level is going to start at 4950 but then we want to be 6100 for our section cut so we're going to pick an above ground we'll call it f2 and it's going to be 4950 the cut height is going to be 6100 then we'll do the same thing for our other levels and so now we're going to save these. We'll notice how these are all in here as different levels like this. So say that we were to pick all levels and we were to click in here and we were to click on architecture plan. It's going to create these for every level, right? And so notice how some of these are duplicates, but you've got a basement, you've got a level one, level two, level three, and level four right here. Now my level four looks like it's a little bit high. So maybe that level four maybe wasn't a level. Um, so that's something to be aware of as well, but that's gone through and that's basically automated the creation of these scenes right here. So that by itself is pretty cool and it's pretty powerful because then you could take this and you could then send those over into layout, right? I've got all of my floor plans 
ready to go. Now, one thing to note about this um, that is pretty important is you want to pay a special amount of attention to the way this model is organized because this is a very well organized model, right? Like all the things in here have been modeled and tagged properly and they're all tagged a certain way so that this can recognize them. Because like, for example, we could actually come in here because we've got all our structural stuff labeled as structural. So say we toggled everything off except our structure. Let's go to our model view. That's probably going to be easier. So say we were to toggle everything off down here except for our structure. We'll notice how that structure is all tagged just like this and it's also grouped by level. And that is going to be something that's going to be really important because if you don't group things by level, this isn't going to be able to recognize them. So you do want to pay attention to the way that things are tagged in here and the levels that they're on. That's going to be massively important. So notice how, for example, this is tagged with level two, this is tagged with level three, this is tagged with level four just like this. So all of these parts and pieces are tagged with different levels on the groups. So your model organization is going to be fairly important with this. But where this gets really powerful though, is this then gives you the ability to create things like a structural plan. So um, I could create structural plans and I could either do it for an individual level just by picking that level, or I could do it for all the levels. But when I do this, it's basically creating or automating the creation of the section cut and the view right here. But this is still a super fast way of generating your plans. Now you are going to have to pay a lot of attention to the way that you organize and set up your models in order to do this, but this is a super powerful tool for doing things like that. Now note that there are also options on the front page. Um, a, you can change between different styles, but those are just going to be like view styles that are just going to set the way that things are going to look um, on the page right here. And you can click back and forth between them like this. Okay. And so there's a ton of other stuff in here and I don't know how far into this I want to get right now because this is just kind of a massive tool, but you've got options in here to do things like automatically creating your level grid right here. And so what that's going to do is that's going to go through, that's going to use your levels and it's going to add a grid to your scene. So notice how this automatically adds that grid in here, just like this. Now note that this is currently using the Curic single line text tool, which integrates with this. Um, so this does integrate with a third party extension. I've not played around with that too much, um, but now we've got these grids and these grids, we can just add them to any of our sections just by clicking on the button, right? Just click in here, add the grid, just like this. And so you can also create column grids. So say we were to go over into the structure right here. So if you've modeled out your columns, so notice how if I double click into this columns group right here, and I want to pick up all of these objects, right? But if I click on the option for column grid, what it's going to do is it's going to put a grid through the middle of all of those objects right here. And so now notice how these are all on a grid. Now note that these are in metric because when I created them, this model's units were set to metric. But as long as you switch your units to imperial before you run this, then the units it creates would be an imperial instead. Okay, so in addition, you can also adjust your view bounds. So let's say, for example, that I wanted this to be a little bit closer to my building. So the views that this has created are a little far away. They show a little more than I need because that's the bounds of the selected objects that are in here. So if I wanted to adjust this, what I can do is I'm picking a view right here. I'm going to click on custom bounds and we're going to say no to this right here. And I'm going to drag those bounds in so that it's really tight to my building. So something like this right here. The nice thing about this is these actually kind of snap an inference, which is pretty cool. Um, in this case, I don't necessarily need that. But once you've done that, what you can do is you can do a control enter in order to set this and you can apply it for this scene versus a new scene. I'm going to say yes to update view so that it updates my view so that it only picks up those bounds right here. Now I have a much better view in here for sending to layout or something like that. Now, one of the cool things about this is now if I want to adjust the bounds of this one, I can just click on copy bounds from another scene and we're going to just pick up that F1 ARCH right here and do a control enter and update it. So now 
these are the same camera location, which is actually kind of vital when you start sending things over into layout, right? For uh, actual like dimensioning and other things like that. And so there's a ton of other features that I, I don't want to get way into right now, but there's things for trying to auto create annotations. And so we'll go to floor three. And so if I click on auto annotation, notice how you can try to set up like automatic floor labels and other things like that. So it's going to try to drop those in here based on different floors. You can try to do automatic wall labels as well. Notice how that's not really working right here. So, so this may be something that you try and it may or may not work. One of the things I do like about it though, is if you double click into something like this floor right here and you pick up the face, you can click on the option for material label. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna label that with a material label right here. So you can go through and you can create your own material labels in different areas just by double clicking in here like this. So if we add a material label, it's gonna do that. So there's a ton of annotation tools in here that you can use as well. And the goal here is being able to do a lot of this inside of SketchUp rather than having to mess with it in layout, which I think is an interesting approach. Um, and I kind of like it, but I do think some of the automatic stuff maybe isn't working the way that I would like for it to. So definitely something that's worth looking into. Um, but you can also add other marks like section marks and things like that in here as well, um, just kind of automatically like this. And then if you don't like them, you can always just delete them back out. Um, but lots of interesting stuff for annotation. And then down below, you've also got options for creating or exporting 2D drawings. So if we click on 2D drawing, right, you can pick your different views. So like for these, for example, I can take them and I can either create and it'll export those images that you've picked up as PNG files, but you can also use this to export as DXF files or CAD files, which I've not played around with a ton, but I know a lot of people struggle with the exports that you can currently get out of a SketchUp model. So kind of automating this export process I think is really cool. Okay, and so one thing that's a little bit weird that I haven't figured out is it looks like it only exports like one image into that folder, not multiple images. So it doesn't look like it exported all of those. It looks like it exported one. It also came in here and it created two dimensional um, line cuts of these, which uh, I do think is helpful, but it's a little odd that it's kind of generating them in here like this. Um, so I'm not sure what's going on with that. The other thing that you may note about this is notice how it looks like your other toolbar or your other scenes have gone away. They actually haven't. You just have to click on this button right here and just pick one of them and then they'll pop back up over here. So I'm not sure why it kind of like hides everything to the left of that, but you can just click on the button right here in order to get back to those. Now there is also an option for exporting to uh, DXF as well. So let's say that we wanted to export maybe like our structural model or something like that. So we'll pick our floor one structure. We'll go to DXF um, and it's going to save our model. But what it's going to do is it's going to export a DXF file right here. And I actually don't have an Autodesk product available. So um, I just opened this up in Rhino, but you can see how this exported this as um, that DXF file right here. And so if you do need to export to CAD format, um, this gives you the ability to export that directly out of SketchUp, which is pretty cool. So like I said, there's a ton of stuff going on at this tool. It really needs to be a multiple part series. So if there's interest in that, I can start working on that kind of thing. I just love to hear from you in the comments down below. Are you interested in this tool? You think it's worth diving into? I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.